Sempiternal space surrounds our Earth, supplying us a serendipitous view of sights. Equally stunning, splendiferous, and spitefully speculative. These superfluous scores of space subsistence come in all shapes and sizes, but can be the splendor of a certain stunner that it will make you describe it only in poetry. Behold the cosmic beauty that is called an Einstein ring. Welcome to Fact Nominal. And today, let's discuss the wonderful rings of fire in deep space that are rare and equally mesmerizing. The universe often surprises us with naturally occurring phenomena that may put our highly imaginative fantasies to shame. The Einstein ring is one such occurrence that makes space so beautiful and intriguing, a perfect ring of fire in the deep, dark sky. And though such cosmic oddity may deceive you with its supernatural glamour like every other thing in our universe, there is well-defined science behind their existence. In fact, we theorized the existence of Einstein rings long before we actually found one out there. The Einstein ring is created when the light that comes from distant objects, such as galaxies, stars, nebulas, etc., passes an extremely large mass like a galaxy cluster. The light from a background galaxy is diverted and distorted around the massive intervening cluster and forced to travel along many different light paths toward Earth, making it seem as though the galaxy is in several different places at once. And if you are wondering why Einstein got the dibs on the name of this real-life Eye of Sauron, it's because he was the one who theorized their existence. Einstein predicted the bending of light by a gravitational body in 1912, a few years before his publication of General Relativity in 1916. Back in that time, we didn't have telescopes powerful enough to detect signs of this phenomenon. The ring effect, however, was first mentioned in the academic literature by Orest Kvolsen in a short article in 1924 in which he mentioned the halo effect of gravitation, when the source, lens, and observer are in near-perfect alignment. However, the effect was confirmed by the British astronomer Arthur Eddington in 1919 during a solar eclipse on the island of Principe off the west coast of Africa, noting that stars near the eclipse disk appeared fractionally out of place because their light was being bent by the sun's gravity. Einstein remarked upon this effect in 1936. He theorized that the fabric of space-time was not rigid but flexible, like the surface of a trampoline. A massive object in this case, a foreground galaxy, can bend space the way a bowling ball bends the fabric of the trampoline. That bend causes any light from background objects to curve around the foreground object instead of traveling in a straight line. And if the two objects are perfectly lined up, the background galaxy will appear as a circle surrounding the foreground, or lens, galaxy, forming the Einstein ring. In one of the most recent discoveries by the Hubble telescope, NASA has come across a remote galaxy that is greatly magnified and distorted by the effects of gravitationally warped space in 2018. Located nearly 9.4 billion light-years away from us, this galaxy is an example of one of the largest nearly complete Einstein rings ever seen. Located at the peak epoch of star formation in cosmic evolution, the stars were born in the concerned galaxy at a rate of a thousand times faster than within our own. Such speedy star formation has caused the galaxy's light to be magnified by a factor of 20. Thanks to this boost by Mother Nature, Hubble was able to capture the lensing effect, as it also created multiple apparitions around the curved arc of the single background magnified galaxy. By now, we have come across hundreds of gravitational lenses in our space exploration. About half a dozen of them are partial Einstein rings with diameters up to an arc second. Although either the mass distribution of the lenses is not perfectly axially symmetrical, or the source, lens, and observer are not perfectly aligned. This is why finding a perfect Einstein ring is such a big deal. In order to derive the physical properties of the galaxy, astronomers had to precisely model the effects of the lensing on the galaxy's image. Such a model could only be obtained with Hubble imaging only. Hubble helped to identify the four duplicated images and the stellar clumps of the lens galaxy. The ring was codenamed Gal Klus 022058s and is located in the Southern Hemisphere constellation of Fornax known as the Furnace. That and the clumped appearance of the ring is why perhaps they appropriately named it the Molten Ring. Last year, Hubble was able to capture yet another perfect Einstein ring about 3.4 billion light-years from Earth, forming a visible ring. 
the round object at the center of the photograph released by the ESA or European Space Agency, is actually three galaxies that appear as seven. The image is a combination of four separate images of the most distant galaxies forming the ring around the others. The farthest galaxy is a special type of very bright galaxy with a gigantic black hole at its center known as a quasar. Given that this galaxy is billions of light years from us, it should be invisible to even the best of telescopes, but its light is curved by the two galaxies in front which are about 3 billion light years away. The light from the galaxy split in multiple direction making its image form in five separate places. Four times on the ring and once at the center of the ring. Sadly, it can only be detected only in the telescope's numerical data. Such formation is often considered an Einstein cross, a variant of the Einstein ring, and is quite commonly found among most of the discovered Einstein rings. While gravitationally lensed light sources are often shaped into an Einstein ring, due to the elongated shape of the lensing galaxy and the quasar being off-center, the images form a peculiar cross shape instead. Recent observations by NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory have been used to measure the size of the magnified X-ray emitting region surrounding the distant black hole, estimated to contain the mass of 500 million suns. Using a technique called microlensing which uses individual stars in the intervening galaxy to increase magnification, a team of researchers has determined that the black hole responsible for Einstein's cross is spinning incredibly mind-blowingly fast over 70% of the speed of light. That's about 470 million miles per hour. These findings indicate that over billions of years of accumulating material into rapidly spinning multi-million degree disks, especially when aligned with their own rotation, supermassive black holes like the one in Einstein's cross can keep accelerating until they achieve near relativistic velocities. There are two necessary requirements for the observability of Einstein rings. The mass distribution of the lens needs to be approximately axially symmetric, as seen from the observer, and the source must lie exactly on top of the resulting degenerate point like caustic. Such a geometric arrangement is highly unlikely for point-like sources, but astrophysical sources in the real universe have a finite extent and it is enough if a part of the source covers the point caustic in order to produce such an annular image. That was a little heavy, wasn't it? But we wish there was a simpler way to explain this. However, finding these Einstein rings is important because they not only help to increase our reach in space, but they also work as a mirror to the past, as the light that passes around them is not new. It's primordial by the time it arrives in our telescopes. The first Einstein ring was discovered in 1988, a quasar lensed by a nearer galaxy into two but very similar images of the same object. The images were stretched around the lens into an almost complete ring. It took us another decade to find our first complete Einstein ring. The galaxy causing the lens here is an ancient elliptical galaxy and the image we were able to see through the lens is a dark dwarf satellite galaxy, which we would not be able to see even with the current technology. Einstein rings help us to understand deep space better than our capabilities. They reveal more information about the distribution of dark matter, dark energy, the nature of distant galaxies and the curvature of the universe. This is why molten ring is such an impactful discovery, because we observed multiple rings around it. The odds of finding a double ring around a massive galaxy are 1 in 10,000. That makes molten rings such a rare find, it's like discovering a golden needle in an infinite haystack. If we managed to find more multiple ringed Einstein rings, the astronomers would be able to measure the dark matter content of the universe and the equation of state of the dark energy to within 10% precision, getting us one step closer to understanding the universe better. Tell us in the comments what secrets you think we might uncover from these primordial galaxies far beyond our ever possible reach. And as always, thanks for watching Fact Nominal.